I'm milling it back with Lois Robbins. Welcome, Lois. Hi. Hi, Robin. So nice to meet you. You as well. So how are you coping with everything that's been going on? How are you getting by? It, it's been, um, I think, a very enlightening and interesting time for, for me, for my family. Um, I think the best part for me is because I've grown children that I feel like I gained all this time back with my kids because we've all been together for the most part. Um, other than my eldest daughter and my son-in-law and my new grandchild, that's been the toughest. I think if I've had to cope with anything, it's been not being able to hold my one-year-old granddaughter and touch my, my daughter is pregnant again and I can't touch her belly. So, and even though I've been tested a million times, I keep getting tested because I want to be able to, you know, be with them. I, rightly so, my, my daughter and son-in-law are very, anxious and they've lost some young friends and um so that's what we've been coping with um but other than that it's been you know a wonderful time with the rest of my children and um my cooking has gotten like superb again i hadn't done that in a while and it's also been a very creative time for me i'm doing a lot of things professionally so that's been good wonderful so speaking of professionally um i was reading your imdb Yes. Going all the way back to the beginning. Oh, and it seems like you had a slew of television series in the 80s. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. I did a lot of daytime television. I actually just did an interview for somebody that's writing a book on Ryan's Hope. And um, of all the soaps that I did, that was definitely my favorite. Um, and then there was you know, a lot of nighttime episodic stuff, which I've been doing you know, still. Uh, but the 80s were a really, really busy time for me. Why did you uh, play doctors all the time on the soaps, do you know? Uh, I think because I have an intelligence about me. So I think they cast definitely on television, very close to type. <laughs> and uh, they always saw me as, as professional women, as intelligent professional women. So I played doctors. I think I played a couple of lawyers. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's why. What's the strangest, craziest thing that you did on the soap that you can remember? Were you I don't this know if this is the craziest, but I, I always love to tell this story that um, the night that I became engaged, I'd spent the day in bed all day with another man. So that was, <laughs> uh, that was really fun. And um, <laughs> how did your fiance feel about that one? Uh, he thought it was pretty sexy. <laughs> And ultimately, he won, so it's okay. We've been married for 34 years, so it's good. <laughs> now, I am blown away. I had absolutely no idea that divorce court is not real. <laughs> oh, my God. I completely forgot I did divorce court. <laughs> yeah, that was completely, that was like a th the first reality television, I guess. So that was fun. I remember actually being in the green room there waiting to do that, uh, that role. I don't exactly remember what the role was. It was a long time ago, but that was a really fun thing to do. So you had to make believe that you were going through a divorce and yes. I am floored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really funny, actually. Oh my God, I can't believe you brought that up. I really didn't remember that until just now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing about, you know, I think as actors, we do so, you know, I think we do so many jobs if we're lucky and you remember the ones you did probably in the last two years or three years, but, or the ones that really resonated with you. But a lot of these jobs, you know, they were jobs and, and then you leave them and they're, they're not lingering. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I know this is your second marriage. So do, do they give you any kind of, you know, break, like come back on the show when you can really be divorced? <laughs> uh, no, they didn't. But you know what, I just remembered something you had asked me what was the most interesting thing that that the experience that I had. And um, I just remembered that on on Ryan's Hope, do you remember who Imogene Coco was? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So Imogene Coco was uh, doing a guest shot on the show. Wow. And and her scenes were with me. And she was so nervous. And she, she was asking me, here she is, she's a legend, right? And I feel like I'm so nervous to be working with her. And she asked me like, what do I do? Like, I don't know, am I doing okay? Am I doing okay? I said, 
you're in Machine Coca. You're asking me if you're doing okay. You're brilliant. You're amazing. Yes, you're doing it all just right. But that was really enlightening for me because I was very young. And here I am working with this legend. And I just couldn't believe that she was nervous. So I thought, you know what? It sort of never changes. We all feel that little bit of insecurity all the time as, as actors. You know, we always want to get it right. I think that's part of being an artist, like always striving to do the best you can do. And I, I thought that was a really great lesson for me. So that was the most memorable moment. I think, uh, you know, just the fact that soaps last forever right. is such a testament to how much, and probably now more than ever, people are watching them over and over again. Um, so is the soap channel still there? So that you, can you still see that? Yeah. Because after I did that Ryan's Hope interview, I was trying to find some of the scenes because the gentleman who was interviewing me was asking me about certain things. And similar to like what you're asking me now, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I didn't remember that. Thank you for reminding me. And then I went to look for the scenes. So yeah, I guess they do. They last forever, which is fun. Yeah. And you're also an art collector. So I thought it was interesting that you played one as well on Younger. Oh yeah, that was really fun. Talk about casting to type. I love art. Um, I grew up, my parents loved to collect art and it's my, I have uh, three older sisters and uh, two out of the three are big art collectors and it's just a, a family passion, I guess. What is, what is it about art that, that, that you gravitate towards? Um, I, I don't know that I could, I, I just, I love living with it and, and looking at it and learning about the artists. Um, I love meeting the artists and uh, one of my favorite art stories was um, we had gone to the Venice Biennale, my husband and I, many, many years ago, and there was a sculpture there by an artist named Carol Furman who does hyper-realistic art. And it won the best sculpture at the fair that year. And I loved that sculpture, but it was huge. And we had nowhere to put anything like that. And um, I just, I had said to my husband, oh my God, uh, I would love to meet her. She must be a really interesting person. I'd love to own something of hers one day. So I'd come back from, I think I was shooting a movie with Eric Roberts and um, I don't think that film has come out yet. And I come home from work and I was in like exercise clothes cause you know, you got to work in sweats or whatever. And my husband, it was a Friday and we were getting ready to drive out to the Hamptons. And he said, I have a surprise for you. I said, what? He said, we're going to Cal Furman's studio. I was like, what? He said, yeah, I found, I found her and I'm taking you there. So we went to her studio and she and I were like um, instantly like soulmates. I don't know what it was, but there was an instant connection. And we spent about two hours with her in her studio and she showed us exactly how she does the work. This is what I love about collecting art. And, and um, then she said, you know, I'm, I, I have a big studio at Manic Contemporary and the piece that you saw at, in, Venice is there along with some other large pieces if you would like to come see it and I was dying to but it was Friday and you know traffic going out to the Hamptons is crazy I said oh my gosh I'm like Andrew my husband can we and he said yeah let's just do it so we dro drive to Manic Contemporary with her and she shows us all these art pieces and my husband is going crazy over them I'm going crazy over them we're like okay I think we, we, we were building a house at the time and um, we actually had a place finally to put one of these pieces. So we said, you know, we're gonna, we wanna take, we're gonna buy this piece. And it was, it was, she makes like six of each and she does like a different color bathing cap or whatever. Anyway, we bought the piece that we had seen at the Biennale. And she said, you know, I'd love to see where it's going. And we said, well, we're heading to the Hamptons now. Do you wanna come with us? And she said, well, I'm thinking we're like, she's my new BFF. Right. And so, she said, well, if you don't mind stopping in the city, because my husband is racing cars this weekend and I'm all alone, I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to uh, come with you. So we said, great. So we, she said, just drop, you know, let's go to the city. Let me pick up a couple of things. So we go to the city, we pick up her clothes. She gets in the car. We're on the Long Island Expressway and she's sitting in the back seat and she says, I'm, I'm sorry, can you tell me what your names are again? <laughs> You know, when we start laughing, we tell her, and she said, you know, you could be like abducting me. I have no idea who you are. <laughs> but anyway, she did come, and we ended up becoming very dear friends, and we are to this day. So those are that, the joys. That's a great story. Okay, so you brought it up. Speaking of Eric Roberts, he is 
a crazy man. Um, I actually used to hang out with him at a club called Columbus in New York City. I don't know if you remember Columbus. I don't remember Columbus. Big hangout with movie stars and actors. What, what was, what did you find surprising about Eric? Because you worked with him later in life. So he's obviously not as nuts as he was. Right. Um, I don't like to kiss and tell, but <laughs> um, he doesn't uh, learn his lines. And um, the first day on set, oh gosh, I don't know if I should tell the story. Oh, tell it. Okay, the first day on set, um, this, it was, it's a film about um, a man who's having an affair and uh, his wife is dying and the son finds out about the affair and the son uh, sets out to kill his wife. Mm. I mean, yeah, sorry, to kill the, 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 the woman he's having the affair with, the mistress. And the first aunt said, Eric says to me, um, well, I've decided that uh, we haven't consummated our relationship yet. Like springs this on you right away. Yes, I said, really? <laughs> I said, oh, okay, well, I'm confused because I thought we were having an affair and that's why your son is trying to kill me. So he said, well, you can be thinking what you're thinking and I can be thinking what I'm thinking. Um, as long as it works, it's okay. So I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, about two or three days later into shooting, he was very sweet and he said, uh, I owe you an apology. He said, we are having an affair. I said, I like you read the script. <laughs> he said, yes. He was very, very humble about it though, and really sweet and, and did eat crow. And then he was a pleasure to work with after that. But I was very surprised, and I know this is a lot of actors um, that do this, that they, they don't learn their lines. A lot of actors at that level. And so um, they were pasted all over we were an interior space that we were shooting in. And um, he did them brilliantly. I mean, he's wonderful at his job and he's a great actor, but I was just surprised because I can't work like that. If I don't know my words, I'm, I'm a mess. I mean, I really need to be completely memorized. I'm the opposite extreme. So um, I was just surprised. I'm sure that like it would drive you crazy too to be like reading his little cue cards everywhere and then. <laughs> well, no, because I'm focused on him. So I, I mean, I knew they were there, and um, and honestly, I mean, it didn't affect his performance at all. He's brilliant um, from the little bit that I've seen of the film, and I, he's wonderful at his job. But I guess for him, um, he does so many films every. He's always working, and I guess it's not you know easy to to go from one job to the next like that and um so you know he 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 understands what his uh through line is and he understands his motivation um but i guess you know he doesn't you know a lot of actors don't feel it's necessary to memorize um oftentimes oh, yeah. like, like more organic if they don't so um i didn't hold it against him i just was surprised yeah, a notorious story is that Marlon Brando wore an earpiece and all. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I will never that. do that. Yeah. I would never do that. No, but I, I couldn't. It would make me too nervous. But um, I, I know that there, that's happened to some people on stage um, that they have to wear an earpiece because they go up a lot. I, I would freak out. To me, that would be like the worst. <laughs> So I didn't get the pleasure of seeing your, your show um, last year um, off Broadway called Lover, but I understand you want to try and turn it into a television series. Is, is, is that happening? Well, you know, right now, obviously nothing is happening. The show, um, uh, we were in the middle of getting an option for France and um, South America, but um, things are sort of because of theater, you know, not being a viable option right now. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but um, yeah. now it actually, the, the show was um, recorded. And so, uh, it's, you know, I guess they're trying to sell it for streaming because there's such um, a need for, for content right now. And um, uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But I think it would be a great television series and um, I, it, we are working on it, but you know, we'll see what happens. Would it open up to more characters because it's a one woman show? Yes, but the point was because I refer to um, my two best friends who I, uh, there are all the other, other characters that I 
uh, play. In, in, I play myself in addition to becoming these other people. So th those people would you know, be real people in the, in the television series. Do you have a, a wish list that you can share? Of who would play my two best friends? Yeah. Um, I actually love Kelly Rutherford. Um, she's become, she actually came to see the play and we've uh, connected since. And uh, I talked to her about it. I think she would be amazing. I, I think she's a wonderful actress. Um, I don't know about the third one. I have to, I have to think about that. Ah, uh, you'll let us know. Okay. <laughs> so what other films um, that you shot that you can talk about that you hopefully will come out someday? <laughs> Oh, there's so many. I'm waiting. A film called Shepherd that I did about a year and a half ago that was shot in Budapest. And it was, it's a beautiful film um, based on a book called, uh, it's a, again, is either an Israeli book or a German book. All of a sudden it's gone out the window, but it's, it's called The Jewish Dog. And it takes place during World War II about a little boy and his dog. And um, it's breathtaking. Uh, it's a real family movie too. It's not a dark um, World War II story. It's it's really for a family film, um, so I'm waiting for that to come out. It was directed by Lynn Roth, and it's um, yeah. So we'll see what we, when that happens. Supposedly, it is coming out shortly. A One Nation Under God that I did with Antonio Sabato Jr. and Kevin Sorbo and Casper Van Dien. I love Casper. I Hi. love Casper. He's such a <laughs> lovely, lovely guy. You know that. All four of us, uh, who are all like four leads in the film, are all on daytime television. Wow, very unusual. <laughs> um, yeah, so that hopefully will come out soon. Um, also, Brianna Lane, who I love, is in that film, and a, an actress named Lauren Frost, who's fantastic. Um, so hopefully that will come. That was supposed to come out July Fourth weekend, but you know, you know, I don't know what happens with all these movies. So waiting on that. A film that I had started shooting. Um, called The Virgin of Highland Park with Dermot Mulroney and Penelope Ann Miller um, that we have to finish shooting when we are allowed to finish. Um, so that is, you know, in halfway in the can. I think there are only six or seven days left to shoot. So hopefully that'll finish up soon. Wow. And, I wonder how that will work logistically. It, have they spoken to you about that? Um, how well, I mean, I've been in touch with the director, but you know, it's it's pretty scary because there are a lot of kids in this film mm -hmm. and kids grow. So I, I was laughing with the director. I said, what are you going to do about all those kids? And she said, we're going to shoot them from a distance. <laughs> it's like no close-ups on those children. <laughs> so I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know. It's really scary. But yeah. And you'll um, have like X's where everybody needs to stand. Like, well, you do that anyway, but they'll right. be further apart. Yeah, but I've also got, um, I've, I'm producing my first movie, which I'm very excited about. Um, really excited about this film. And then um, I'm in the middle of optioning a book that I want to turn into a mini series. So um, I'm busy. And then I do my live interviews every Friday, which I've been having a ton of fun with on my um, Instagram, IGTV. And that's been very interesting. I love it because like you, I love doing the research to learn about people and um, I'm having a lot of fun with that. Oh, cool. So um, tell me more about the uh, production that you're, that you're doing. Is, is it under your, like a new company that you formed or? Um, trying to think of uh, the name of what, what, I'm, what it's gonna be, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. I've got to come up with something good. And uh, yeah, I just feel like I'm at a point in my career that, um, you know, I'll, all working actors that I know all have their own production companies. They're all optioning things and developing things. Um, the film that I'm producing uh, is with Howard Rosenman, who was one of the producers on Call Me By Your Name. And he hired me to um, do the film Shepherd that, um, that we're waiting. And I, I immediately, I was sent the script and I immediately called him. I said, I just read a script and I'm meeting with the writer tomorrow and I've never really wanted to produce, but this film is so fantastic. Would you read it and let me know if you'd be interested in producing this? Because if you want to do it, I want to produce, I want to produce it with you so I can learn from you. And he read it and he said, Lois, this is gold. What is it called? I'm not going to tell you anything about it yet. 
Because okay. we we're waiting to get all the deals signed. So, um, but trust me when I tell you, it's based on a true story and it's a love story between a father and a son. And it is absolutely beautiful. Well, that uh, Tony Goldwyn is directing. No. Yes. I love him too. You. Wow, you work with my best friends. This is <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited. Tony's kid, I don't know if you've ever met her, um, his daughter was in an uh, audition for a play that I actually produced uh, two summers ago that ran at 5090-59. Oh, wow. What, a play that you produced? What oh, was it, was, it was called Less Than 50%. Um, and it. it was also a one-man show, so I have, I have a soft spot for, well, actually yes. it's a two-hander, but he was in it more than she was. <laughs> wow, that's so exciting. Yeah. He's, he's been amazing, really, really amazing. I love him. He's great. Oh, that would be so much fun. Good luck with that. Yeah, thank you. Cool. So what else are you looking forward to um, when um, everything hugging my up? Hugging my daughter, um, meeting my new grandson in September, um, and just, you know, being able to hug my friends again. I mean, this has really been... Uh, and, and being on a stage again and being in a rehearsal studio and being on a set with people. I mean, I'm just, I really miss working. I just, I miss, I miss as much as I have embraced this time, as I said earlier in our conversation, and it's been um, like, what do you call it? It's a, I mean, it's a gift. It's been a gift to, to be with my kids again and have this time as a family. But I really miss, I miss real life. And I, I sad for like, the whole world, when you think about the domino effect of this crisis, this health crisis, it's frightening. And I'm worried for my peers and, uh, you know, so I, I'm just looking forward to, to the world. I mean, I can't believe the United States is, is having the worst experience with this pandemic than the rest of the world. It's like a third world country. It is just unbelievable. So I, I'm looking forward to everybody, to this being behind us and, and, I'm looking forward to November, and that's all I'll say about it. We won't get political. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> well, lots of virtual hugs to you. Thank you to you, too. And thank you so much for wanting to have this conversation with me. It was so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you as well. And take good care and also stay safe, of course. Thank you, and same to you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Always news. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.